So this video, I am going to predict what the hobby is going to be like price wise in four years. So it's September, 2023, as of the recording of this video and the posting of this video, and I'm predicting in 2027, what the hobby landscape is going to be like price wise. So the reason why I decided to do this video is because in early 2021, I made a video where I predicted car prices would crash in 2023. And I was right. Um, so the video, this is the video that I posted was while I was predicting those prices would go down and the, the bubble would pop. Did that video in March 6th of 2021. And here's a, a graph from Car Ladder. This is the CL50. These are 50 hand selected cards that Car Ladder thinks best represents the card market. And it's, it's a good look at, at the hobby as a whole in terms of sales and index and all that. But you can see March 7th, the day after I posted that video, I mean, it's more coincidence than anything, it was the height of the hobby. Then essentially the next day that the hobby started crashing a whole lot. Now you're looking at two years out. This is 2021 and now you're, you're here in September. You can see there's a quite a crash, quite a correction, negative 19% growth. But the point of this video is not to pat myself on the back. I, I certainly wasn't the only one who saw this coming, but I figured I'd do another prediction video, this time predicting four years out. And I'm going to predict the hobby landscape as a whole. And then for the most, for most of this video, I'll predict prices on key cards across the major sports. I think this could be a, a fun time capsule to, to look at four years from now to see if I was right about these, these card prices for a particular card. So the prediction now, I think once again, car prices as a whole will still go down. Why do I think prices will still go down? Which is something I brought up a couple years ago. And I still think this is true. One of the big reasons, social media burnout. Four years from now is a long time. I made sports cards videos on YouTube since 2012. I don't make them that frequently, but doing it for 11 years, I, I've seen very few channels continue for more than four years. There's just a burnout continually producing content on sports cards. I mean, let's be honest, there's only so much you can talk about sometimes. So I think you'll see less sports card influencers four years from now. And with less of these influencers you know, pushing the hobby, there's going to be just less exposure and, and the prices will be driven down. Another reason why I think card prices will go down, there will be the end of fractional share companies in 2027. I think as a whole, you, the companies will, will go away. And these fractional share companies really did play, I think, a big role in, in driving up prices for a lot of cards over the last few years. They're, they're essentially artificially inflating card prices. You know, these, these fractional share companies would buy high-end cards at record prices at auctions and then, quote-unquote, resell them on their apps. So they didn't care that, that it cost them a ton of money to buy um, a certain card because they know they knew that or they thought that thousands of people on their app would buy a fraction of that card and they'd be good. But now that card prices have come down on cards, these fractional card companies are left holding the bag on a lot of cards that have dropped in value. And you're seeing these fractional share companies selling off a lot of their cards back to the auction houses that they originally bought the cards from, but at a huge loss. So my predictions in 2027 is Fractional share companies will essentially disappear. Maybe the ones that survive could survive because they sell more than just sports cars. They, have, they, they do cars and artwork and wine, et cetera, like, a, like, at, like rally. But I think that's a reason why car prices will go down. And another reason is I just, I think prices are still unreasonably high, but I don't think most cars will return to pre pandemic prices. Most cards are still priced at two to four times more than they were in 2019. And that's, that is quite a markup. And to me, that's just not sustainable. So let's guess card prices for 2027. This is, I think this is the, the key point of this video is just to have a little fun. Guess, guess what these, some of these card prices could be in four years. Um, and I picked a few key cards from the major sports and I picked these cards in certain grades that that most collectors are interested in. This is not a video guessing par prices for investors. These are just some cards that everyone wants in their collection at, at, at certain grades. 
And for the most part, I, I kept vintage cards off the list. It's just, it's harder to guess accurate pricing on, on vintage cards and in particular grades because, for example, a 1951 Bowman PSA 5 is is can be all over the place. There could be it could be off center, could be registration issues, et cetera. So it's just to keep it simple. For the most part, I, I stick to modern cards or cards that are like post fifties. So let's start it off with basketball with the 1986 Fleer Jordan and a PSA eight. PSA eight seems to be generally speaking the grade that a lot of collectors want to want to get for this card. Very high pop in a PSA eight. 8,602 of these cards. And in 2019, pre-pandemic, so I'm always going to show what the cards, car prices were before the big boom and now and the car prices now. So in 2019, this card went for $2,700. Now it's going for $6,440. At its peak, it went for nearly $8,000. So I think in 2027, this card will be worth $4,000. Next, we have the 1996 Topps Chrome Kobe Bryant in a PSA 10, um, 2019. This car went for $2,050. And we know now that in, in January of 2020, Kobe unfortunately passed away, and that did boost his prices a little bit um, along with the pandemic. And in 2023, now it's worth $5,150. So a pretty low pop card. There's 853 of these cards. But I think in 2027, this card will be worth $3,750. At its peak, this went for $10,000. But I think this will be under $4,000 in four years. Next, we have the 2003 Topps Chrome LeBron James and a PSA 10. There's a pop of 2,255, so more than the Kobe Bryant rookie. Uh, 2019, this card was going for $2,725. Now it's going for about $6,000 at its peak. This is going for over $11,000. But I think in four years, this card will be worth $4,000. And then just for fun, I threw it through in the 2018 Prism Luca in a PSA 10. It's a pop of almost 20,000 in PSA 10. 2019, this card was going for $207 in 2023. Now it's going for two. $132. At its peak, though, it was going for $2,000 with a pop of nearly 20,000 cards. I think in four years, this card will be worth 50 bucks. And that's pretty generous. There are a lot of those cards out there. All right, on to baseball. This is the only vintage card I put on this list. Um, but I, th I, th I figured I'd throw in one. And I actually had this card in a PSA 5. So the 1954 Tops Hank Aaron in a PSA 5. It's a pop of 963 in 2019. Uh, this card was going for $2,766. Now it's going for about $5,617. Um, it was already seeing a rise in 2014. So even, even before uh, the, the, the card price boom. I remember the, when this card in a PSA 5 you could get for $740. But... Now it's going for $5,617 in four years. I think this card will be a little bit less than $4,000. I think it'll be $3,900. So I'm, I'm, I'm bashing my own cards here. I had this card in a PSA 5. <laughs> At its peak, this card actually went for $13,500. Another iconic card for baseball, the 1989 Upper Deck Ken Griffey Jr. in a PSA 10. There's a pop of over 4,000 at its height. It went for $5,000. So pre-pandemic in 2019, it went for $648. Now it's about $1,915. In four years, I think this card will be worth $850. So less than $1,000. But I still think this card will be worth more than it, when it was worth in 2019. That's the case for, for a lot of these predictions. Next, the 1993 SP Jeter in a PSA 8. There's a ton of these in PSA 8s, nearly 10,000 PSA 8s, but there's a ton of Yankee and Jeter fans, so I, I figured I'd I, I pick the PSA 8 to guess the price. 
So in 2019, this car was going for $585. Uh, in 2023, it's now worth $360. So there was some hype around 2019 of him getting into the Hall of Fame, which helped. But in four years, I think this card will be worth 300 bucks. So the, the modern day, uh, I guess, flagship rookie card everyone wants to get in baseball, the 2011 Topps Update Mike Trout in a PSA 10. It's a pop of over 6,000. In 2019, this card was uh, worth $946. Now it's worth $1,125. Uh, with a high population like like it is, and, and Trout looking less and less like he'll, he'll reach major milestones, I think he could probably reach 500 home runs, but I don't think he's ever going to reach 3,000 hits. I just, I, I think this card will be worth about $750. Uh, now, you know, this is, a, this is a, a wild card card to pick. I mean, because there's a lot of rumors nowadays that he could get traded uh, potentially to Philadelphia. And so that that could help his card prices. You know, the, the playoff exposure that could come with being traded to a better team could help him. But I, I still think ultimately in four years, this card be worth less than a thousand dollars in a PSA ten. There's just that a pop of over six thousand is, is a ton. On to football, the nineteen eighty one tops Joe Montana at PSA nine. There's a pop of over two thousand. Still pretty low for. Um, a card in the junk wax era. In 2019, this card was going for $549. Now in 2023, it's going for $1,886. At its peak, it went for $5,000. But in four years, I think this card will be worth $850. So we got the 1986 Topps Jerry Rice in a PSA 9. This has half the pop of the PSA 9 Joe Montana rookie. Jerry Rice is the undisputed goat of his position. Uh, Montana has been surpassed by Brady and, and, and maybe even Mahomes someday. To me, Rice's career numbers are basically untouchable. This has a pop of about 1000 In 2019, this card was going for $548. Today, it's going for $3,341. I think in four years, it will go for $1,650. This, this this guess might be a little bit lower, but uh, my reasoning behind this this guesstimate is there's just not a ton of football collectors compared to to baseball and basketball. I don't know that price to me one thousand six hundred fifty fifty dollars is a price I'd probably pick up that card for because, like I said, he he he's the goat of wide receivers, and I don't think anyone's going to touch his records. This card went for as high as seven thousand dollars back in February two thousand twenty one. Speaking of goats, probably the goat of football, Tom Brady. The 2000 Bowman Chrome Tom Brady in a PSA 10. There's a pop of 1,149. 2019, this card was going for $2,500. Today, it's going for a little bit over $8,000. This card at its peak uh, was going for nearly $24,000 back in November of 2021. But in 2000. 27, four years from now, he'll be five years removed from the spotlight. I'm sure he'll be a broadcaster soon enough, but he'll be removed from the spotlight in terms of being a player. And this is a pretty low pop, but he has a ton of other rookie cards for people to choose from. And for that reason, I think in four years, this card will be worth $4,750. Still a lot of money, still a lot more than, than what it was going for in 2019. And then... We have the 2017 Prism Patrick Mahomes. It's a Prism Silver. All these cards, the base cards of that year were well, these had a refractor finish. So there was no like Prism parallel that wasn't base. Um, so in a PSA 10, uh, there's only 926 of these cards, pretty low pop. In 2019, this card was going for $683. Now it's going for $3,900. This is a tricky one to guess. His cards didn't go up after winning the Super Bowl last year, but he does have two Super Bowl titles under his belt. Tom Brady has seven. So 
theoretically, he could win four more Super Bowls over the next four years, which would bring him to a total of six, just one behind Tom Brady, which could really help his card values. But there's just so many tough teams in the league right now. I, I, I can't see him winning four straight Super Bowls. So in 2027, I think this card will be worth $2,650. I think this this card would still have a pretty strong price. Uh, it's it's a low pop. This is back in 2017 when there, when there wasn't like a million different parallels of Panini Prism. Okay, on to hockey. The 2015 Upper Deck Young Guns, Connor McDavid in a PSA 10. In 2019, this card was going for $440. Now it's going for $2,666. In four years, in 2027, I think this card will be worth $1,500. At its peak, this card was going for over $4,000. All right, the goat of hockey, the 1979 Opeachy Wayne Gretzky in a PSA 7. I picked PSA 7 because it's still pretty low pop, and it's you know, to me it's a, it's a good collector grade. So there's 1,301 of these cards. In 2019, this card was going for $1,732. In 2023 today, it's going for $3,827. In four years, I think this card will be worth $2,750. There aren't a ton of hockey play, hockey collectors out there. Granted, this is this is the GOAT card. This is the card everyone wants, even if you're not a hockey fan. I, I think this this card will will settle at $2,750. Granted, there's some variables in there. This card is always off-centered. I think for the most part, this, this that's what this card will settle at price-wise. But at its height, this card actually went for $14,000. Crazy times. So in conclusion, I'm not saying run for the hills, but dampen your expectations. It was a once in a gen generation hobby explosion. If we have another pandemic, it still won't match 2020. Uh, it's just this perfect storm of height already building and then boom. I mean, if you think back in the hobby started climbing back in 2017 with Aaron Judge and then you had Otani coming out in 2018 and, and, and Luca. Um, so there, there was already a build, and then with all this time and, and money that people had just laying around not traveling, it it, just, it exploded. But moving forward, these are my recommendations. Acquire cards with great eye appeal. I mean, I'll still be buying cards, some even on this list. Price changes, but great eye appeal does not. There's certain cards that are just tough to find with nice centering, with nice registration, zero print marks, no matter the grade. So look look for those cards and you'll still be happy to have them in your collection, even if the values go down on them. Key cards, get go after key cards from goats or rare cards of your favorite player or set. Rare will always be rare, especially if you're looking at pre-2000s, 90s inserts, uh, rare pre-war cards, etc. And Goats like Babe Ruth, Mickey Mantle, Willie Mays, Jackie Robinson will, will always be collected and will have a better chance of not losing their value or not lo losing as much value. And of course, there's goats in other sports like, like Jordan. And then vintage is and always will be a safer bet. Vintage will go down the least in the next four years, in my opinion, and that's that's been the case the last 100 years. And there will be outliers. Not every single card will lose money in four years, of course. I'm just saying that the card hobby as a whole will see prices go down. But before I go, who will still be around in 2027? There are so many third-party grading companies right now. I think there's seven major ones. There's no way, in my opinion, that that really more than four will be around in the next couple of years. But I'm, I'm curious what your thoughts are on that and what your thoughts are on, on, on the, the card prices I predicted. So thank you for watching. We shall see in four years if my price predictions are right or wrong. Will I eat crow? Will it be completely off? Will it be right? Who knows? But thanks for watching and please like and subscribe.